For this example, we want to find dy dx, and we have sine of x plus y equals y squared cos x. One thing to note before we go too far into this problem is anytime we're taking the derivative and the variable that we're taking the derivative of doesn't match this variable in the denominator here on this dy dx, we have to throw on an extra prime. So in this case, every time we take the derivative across a y, we have to tack on a y prime. Um, that's essentially just the chain rule because y is a function of x. Uh, so don't get too caught up on that. Essentially, every time you take a derivative across a y, throw on that extra y prime there, and I'll show you what I mean. Um, so let's see. So let's go ahead and take the derivative of both sides. I like to just use this prime notation because it's simpler, so I'm just going to prime both sides here. Okay, on the left side, we're going to need the chain rule, which tells us to take the derivative of the outside and multiply it by the derivative of the inside. Okay, so here our outside function is sine, so the derivative of sine is cosine, and then you leave the inside alone, right? So that's the thing with the chain rule. You only do it one step at a time. So you leave the inside alone. Now I'm gonna take the derivative of the inside. Okay, so derivative of x is one, plus, well, the derivative of y is one, but every time we take the derivative across a y, we throw on that extra y prime. That's essentially the chain rule. Okay, so there's that. Now we have equals. Now on the right side, we're gonna need the product rule, okay, which tells us fg prime is f prime g plus g prime f. Okay, so in this example, we can, we can treat um, y squared as f and cos x as g. Okay, so we'll do f prime g. So f prime, in this case, will be 2y, and here we are again, so we put on the y prime. We add on, multiply by y prime. That's the chain rule, essentially, on y. So f prime g, we leave g alone, cos x plus g prime, okay, derivative of cos, negative sine, sine x times f, y squared. Running out of room there. Okay, we're done with the calculus. The rest of this example is all algebra. Um, and algebra is the hardest part of these kinds of problems, oftentimes. Right, the calculus is one, one line, one step. The rest of it is algebra. We need to get this y prime by itself. We're solving for y prime here. Right, this is the one we want to isolate. Uh, but it's non-trivial algebra. So let's see. Let's take this cos xy and distribute it through. And these steps that we're about to do will be the same for a lot of these implicit differentiation problems. There's, there's a lot of repetition to these. So let's see how it goes. We distribute through, so we have cos of x plus y plus y prime cos of x plus y equals all the stuff on the right. Now that we've distributed, let's get everything with a y prime in it on one side, everything else on the other. So I'm going to take this term here and subtract it from both sides. That gives us y prime cos x plus y minus 2y y prime cos x. Now I'm going to take this term here, this cos x plus y term, and subtract that from both sides. So I'm going to subtract that over here. So this gives me equals negative y squared sine x minus cos of x plus y. All right, so all I did there was a little bit of algebra to get the y primes all on one side, everything else on the other. Now the crucial step, we factor out the y prime. And that's always going to happen with these kinds of implicit differentiation examples. So here we go, the y prime comes out to the front and we're left with all this stuff behind cos of x plus y minus 2y cos x equals, and the right side stays the same. Now to get y prime by itself, we divide both sides by all this stuff currently multiplying the y prime. So we'll divide by cos x plus y 
minus 2y cos x, and we do that to both sides. Okay, and there you have it. That's your y prime. I'm going to rewrite this just a little bit to make it look a little bit nicer. So y prime equals, the way I'm going to do that, I'm factoring out a negative from the top and the bottom. So that, when I do that, that makes the top positive. So y squared sine x plus cos x plus y. And then I factored a negative out of the bottom. When I did that, the, both the negatives canceled out in the front. So that gives us 2y cos x minus cos x plus y. And there's our final answer.